Hey friends, Tao here. It's Kentucky Derby time, and we are ready to celebrate with a special collection of Kentucky flavors like bourbon ball, mint julep, and more. This limited edition collection will ship nationwide on goldbelly.com from April 24th through May 6th, Derby Day. That's goldbelly.com. As entrepreneurs, it's easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day tasks and lose sight of the bigger picture. Knowing your why or your purpose for starting your business can help keep you focused and motivated, especially during the challenging times. It's the existential fuel to help you power through those tough moments. It's also the guiding force behind building a thriving business. Knowing the why behind the creation of your product or service can help you make better decisions for the business, create a stronger brand, and ultimately lead to greater success. So if you go back to episode one and two, where I talk about our origin story, how we all got started and why we are in this crazy little ice cream business, you'll understand that my journey has been an ever evolving path. And when I started, you know, my why for opening a restaurant, which is funny because when I left for college, I swore I'd never come back to Kentucky. And I also swore that I would never work in food again. And here I am in Kentucky working in food 20 years later. When I asked my parents to open Thai Orchid in 2006, my why really was, well, I'd love to be in business for myself because I knew that I just wasn't I wasn't as interested in working hard for somebody else. I think that was my big thing. In 2015, we opened the first Crank and Boom store in the distillery district. And at the time, our lease was coming up at the restaurant. At that time, our restaurant had been running for nearly nine years. My body was breaking down when you're doing the same task over and over and have a lot of repetitive motion. And when you're near a cook on the line, it is a very physical job and is taxing. My shoulder was starting to wear out. I was getting weird back pain. And even with a limited schedule, we found that selling ice cream for a week, we would have more sales in that ice cream shop in a week than we would an entire month at the Thai restaurant. And seeing the potential that we had, even though at the time, I believe our ice cream sales for our entire business was between 10 and 20% of our entire income. And so the thought of letting go of 80, 90% of our income to dive full into this ice cream thing was uh, crazy. Our restaurant was very hard to operate if we were not there all the time. An ice cream shop was much easier to operate with team members who could make the ice cream and then we could have other people serving it. And that operation was a much simpler operation to manage, trying to picture what our life would look like. I was really tired of working on New Year's Eve. I was tired of working on Valentine's. I was tired of not being home till 10 o'clock, 11 at night, every night, and being exhausted all the time. It was a really hard decision. It was one of the hardest things I feel like I've had to go through in terms of deciding what to do with my life. It was very risky, but I knew in my heart that Crank and Boom had some other bigger potential that I couldn't even imagine yet, and I didn't know what it was, but I could just feel it in my bones. And so I hung on to that, even though it felt very scary and it felt hard, and I cried every day for months trying to come to terms with this decision that we had made. And Mike Green, he's a man of few words, but he always comes up with great advice. And he said to me, sometimes you got to let go of one dream to chase a bigger dream. So at the time, switching and our why was just trying to say goodbye to that lifestyle of having to be in a restaurant all the time. So this was our way to be able to start moving towards the life that we really wanted to live. Hey friends, Tao here, popping in to share my excitement about one of my favorite companies in the whole world, Holly Hill & Co. If you are like me and are obsessed with food, especially local food, you will appreciate those special ties that happen around the table. Holly Hill & Co. believes, like I do, that food creates connection and community unlike anything else. That's why they take care to strengthen the ties across the generations between family, the farmer, and the land, 
all the way to the food that ends up on your table. You can experience exactly what this means at one of Holly Hill's nine unique Central Kentucky restaurants and through their beautiful emails. If you're in Kentucky, be sure to find the nearest location and get ready for an amazing experience with the most fantastic food. Holly Hill's co-founder is none other than my dear friend, James Beard-nominated chef Weta Michael, who's been a force on the Kentucky food scene for over 20 years. Learn more about their incredible food community by visiting hollyhillandco.com, where you'll find stories, recipes, how-tos, and even curated gifts. Again, that's hollyhillandco.com, and let them know that Tao from Crank and Boom sent you. Hey friends, we couldn't be more stoked to have another amazing partner as one of our lead sponsors for the Crank and Boom podcast. I'm talking about none other than our friends at Gold Belly. If you haven't heard of Gold Belly, I am about to change your life because they are America's number one food marketplace and they ship the most famous, most regional, iconic foods from right around the country right to your door. I honestly can't tell you how incredible it's been to work with these folks. We've been partnering with them since 2009 and since then, we have shipped our ice cream to all 50 states and Canada. What a fantastic way for our family business to reach a nationwide audience from our little corner of Kentucky. We're in pretty amazing company, too, because they have everything from meal kits from top chefs like Nancy Silverton or Danny Meyer to local regional classics like Maine Lobster Rolls or Texas Brisket. And again, it's all available to ship right to your door. Just talking about this makes me so very hungry. Hungry. So if you haven't taken advantage of Gold Belly's amazing offers, now's the time. Run over to their website at goldbelly.com and make your foodie dreams come true. That's goldbelly.com. And be sure to add a collection or two of Crank and Boom ice cream to your cart as well. So as we, you know, are deep into the ice cream business, we've said goodbye to the Thai restaurant. One of the most challenging parts of being an entrepreneur is there is no instruction manual. No one tells you what you're supposed to do next. You have the freedom and the openness to do whatever the heck you want and to take your business in whatever direction you want. But at some point, you know, you have to kind of take the reins back and decide what is it that we're doing here? Are we spending our time the way we want to? You know, when the business is starting, my strategy was to just say yes to every single opportunity. But as you grow, you have so many opportunities, you hope that you have so many opportunities that you have to decide which ones you do because you can't do everything. And then you get the chance to get to decide what's the best use of my time and what's the best use of our money because you can do all sorts of things and go in all sorts of directions. I think one of the evolutions of the business world is that you can't just be in business anymore. You need to have a reason that you're here. Our younger generation is demanding it. They demand that we don't exist just for the sake of profits. And, you know, if we're going to exist here on earth, we need to have a reason for that. One thing that really helped me was in 2016, I am somewhat involved with the local Chamber of Commerce, their leadership program. And during orientation, one of the facilitators, Dr. Virgil Grant, hello, Virgil, if you're listening to this, he, you know, jokingly talked about how he wanted to have a job just eating ice cream. And I jokingly said to him, well, if you do a life plan, then I will just give you as much ice cream as you want. <laughs> and he said, okay, let's do that. It was great because it came out with a personal mission statement. So my personal mission statement that came out of this process was to create, it's, a, it's six words, three statements, six words, create joy, ignite laughter, inspire compassion. And we came up with that really fast, actually. And it just made so much sense to me because those words really embody what sets my soul on fire. It is what I feel like brings me the most happiness. One thing that I really emphasize to our team members is, you know, something that's not in the mission statement is sell ice cream. The word ice cream is not in the mission statement. We, of course, have to sell ice cream to be able to do the mission statement. So the ice cream is really our vehicle. But this other stuff we're doing is so much more important. 
it has been a gift to be able to have the mission statement to kind of fall back on when COVID hit and all of the restaurants in our town were shut down. Leaning into that mission and really holding that to our hearts when the decision was hard and deciding that, well, why don't we do special pints named after our state leaders who are helping us get through this whole COVID thing. Let's name the pint after them and then let's give some of the money to charity. Most people would be going the opposite way and trying to hoard as much cash as you could just to survive. And I thought, well, why don't we lean into the mission? And this is why we're here is to take care of our community and do the best we can. And if this is what takes us out, then that's a hell of a way to get taken out. If we're gonna go out by saying, we're gonna try to take care of other people that probably need more help than we do right now, that's an okay way to go. I am at peace with that, if that is what happens. So I think the mission statement and having your why and having it as your North Star is really vital to knowing why you make the decisions you do and also just giving you a North Star to know where to go when you have no instruction manual because you're an entrepreneur and you're making it up as you go. If we do the mission statement right and we do it consistently and we treat others with kindness and we bring joy to other people, everything else will take care of itself. So how do you even figure out what is your why? And what I want to emphasize is that your why can change. Your why can be short-term or it can be long-term. I will look at my life where it's at right now and I try to envision what does the life look like that I'm chasing? And at one point I had envisioned living in a house with my husband and having kids and having a business and being able to travel. One of the most poignant moments in my life was actually opening my eyes and saying, I have everything that I had dreamed of five years ago that I had wanted so badly and what I had worked for. And, you know, now what does life look like? I dream of a life that I can travel more. I want to be present for my children. Life is always gonna evolve, but I think it's important to picture what it is you want your life to be. How do you want to feel? What is success going to look like for you? What is it going to take for you to be satisfied and feel that you are happy? Because I think at one point, my dream was to have 100 crank and booms all over the country. And I wouldn't say that's not my dream anymore. Maybe that could happen someday, but it's not my most important dream right now. So I think being able to really hone in on what it is you want to work on now and just be okay with the path and the journey because all sorts of things are going to come along the way. So enjoy the journey as much as you can, but know why you're doing it in the first place. You know, why does it matter? Because we can just stand back and serve ice cream and have our moments of joy, but I think there's so much more in the world that needs to be addressed and I think there's so many voices that aren't heard and I think we as a business and especially as we've grown and our platform's gotten bigger and our community influence has gotten bigger, we have a responsibility to bring joy to others and to inspire that compassion and to show other leaders that there's another way to do business and also not be afraid to just stand for something. It's so important to have a mission statement and a why. And when you're starting out, maybe you don't know what your why is, but eventually you don't wanna just be flailing around in the ocean with nowhere to go. You want to have a direction that you're headed towards, even if it's a short-term goal. And it's also important as you're building a business to have that North Star because that North Star is going to guide you as you build all the elements around your business besides what you're actually serving or producing or selling and that is branding and we're going to actually talk about branding in the next episode which i'm so excited about thanks so much for listening to my story here on the crank and boom podcast when you're listening to our show on whatever platform is your favorite, be sure to hit that follow button and you won't miss anything we've got going on with the show. And if you liked what you heard today, please leave a review. It would just mean so very much to me. That helps people find us too. 
I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we're talking about and also what topics you'd like for us to cover on the show. Leave us a comment and I would love to hear from you. I can't wait to meet you here again soon. Until next time, peace. This is a production of Four Eyes Media.